Sabaho, Sabaho, everybody. Sabaho, hope you guys are doing well. Um, give it a few minutes for people to show up. I, I, I do want to apologize. I'll start off the show today uh, with a little bit of an apology. I was actually quite a bit late today. Uh, normally, we try to shoot for at least a 1030 start show. Uh, today, we were a little bit later, uh, more like close to 1135, 1136 this, uh, this morning here, uh, midday here in uh, Southern California on the 19th of December, 2020, literally about 10 days left or so um about 12 days i think uh, you know so the 31 days left here in uh, southern california well it's a year in 20 sorry 20 days or, ah i'll start off start over again uh it is december 19 2020 episode 51 of saturday morning with tech um and i have a feeling uh live stream is going through the same thing we went through last saturday which was uh, a little bit i don't know uh, we'll have to see how it goes uh, but with that being said, uh, it is episode 51. We crossed the 50 last week. We also had another milestone this week. I don't know if you guys had a chance to check it out, but on Thursday, Thursday night, uh, Juan Carlos and I, uh, some gadget guy, as you guys know, had uh, started a new show called The Best of the Week or basically The Best of Your Week. And uh, the show started. Uh, good morning. Good morning, everybody. I've seen a whole bunch of people starting to join in. Uh, ahlan, ahlan, welcome from Turkey. Um uh, Said is from uh, from Turkey there and uh, tech for your nerds. Hi, good morning. And um, the show is actually something that we've been working on for quite some time. So the, the name of the show was, was basically to try to culminize what did we feel like within the last week or so, whatever, um, is that best part of the, you know, the best tech or the best of your week. It doesn't have to necessarily be tech, it could be family related, it could be work related, it could be announcement, it could be something coming up. Uh, but the short version of it is essentially something to do with tech. Uh, and of course, Sam, uh, good morning, man. Sabaho, how are you doing? Uh, and it, it shortly, I think it was such a cool show concept going on. So it was a lot of fun to shoot. It was a lot of fun to hang out with Juan Carlos again. That was something that I, I realized a lot of people uh, wanted it to happen, and it kind of finally started happening. Uh, first episode went up on Thursday, and we're working it to make it into more of a, a weekly uh, process. Although the final home of the show, I'm not sure if this is going to stay where it is, like basically on YouTube and on his on his Twitch, because there was cross-platform uh, stream. So we streamed it to my YouTube channel and uh, Juan Carlos's Twitch account. So if you notice that essentially, if you follow them either, either on Twitch or even in a Discord, we kind of uh, mentioned it there as well. Um, <laughs> dude, you're still playing World of Warcraft. That is so cool. Okay, cool. No, no, I'm not saying that it's older, but I'm just, it's like really nice because I feel like everybody would probably be playing, uh, you know, either uh, Cyberpunk 2077 or, you know, with the whole debacle that kind of went up this week, uh, or uh, if nothing else, uh, you know, Warzone with the new uh, season pass being released during that week too. Uh, <laughs> needs, not nerd. Oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> Tech for your needs. I am nerding out on this one, dude. I'm, I apologize. But yes, no. Good morning. Hey, Greg is in the comment as well. Um, so with that being said, that show was really cool. It was very nice. The format, for the most part, is being worked out. So you'll notice a lot of experimentations going on there. Uh, we're hoping to see basically you know, involvement of other creators as well, having people on. And of course, just having our, our normal uh, just banter kind of back and forth between Juan Carlos and myself. So uh, that show was really cool on Thursday. There's a few more things I want to talk to you guys about this week as well. And uh, for everybody kind of join in, uh, oh, the new expansion. Nice, nice, nice. Um, sorry, that was, I was, uh, <laughs> uh, I was, uh, sorry, responding back to Sam's uh, comment. Uh, I do, uh, IR, uh, ER, so ER in 1980, uh, I want to say, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sabah Good morning, man. Good morning. Um, I do want to ask, actually, um, um, I keep saying it IR uh, 1980, and I noticed in Juan Carlos's live stream, he refers to it as E. So the French, the European way of saying I as an E. So like E R, uh, e -R, -R if it's French, depending where it's from. Uh, but if you don't mind, let me know uh, if it sounds more of an E or an I sound in the beginning. I don't want to mess it up, and I do apologize if I am, because I learned very hardly last week that... Um, uh, Ronaldo, Ronaldo, Rolando is the name uh, for my tech reviews. It's not Ronaldo, which I've been calling him for quite some time. So I do apologize. I know a week later. Um, uh, ER is jumping in. I missed your live stream on Thursday, but I caught it up uh, with it on, on Friday. Unfortunately, uh, it's too early in the morning here for the UK. And I, I realized I saw the comment and I do. I, I, I want to talk to Juan Carlos to try to figure out some timing on it. 
uh, the live stream, the first live stream that we did kind of went for about an hour and a half. We were shooting for an hour. We overshot by a half. It ended at about 11 o'clock our time, local time here in California, since, you know, Juan Carlos and I are locally, uh, locally or co we coexist locally. I don't know if there's a good way to say that. Um, yes. So the, uh, the, the thing that kind of went through with this and we want to find the right timing. So the goal obviously is if it's later, a little bit later on, it'll probably catch, uh, the UK crowd. Uh, and of course, you know, Ara, like Matt's, uh, and everybody else in the UK, uh, earlier in the morning. So hopefully that worked. Um, I noticed that there were some people in Greece that were also uh, hitting us up. So I was like very excited to see some of the people there. Um, Yeah, no, some people, I mean, I mean, we even had some people on the East Coast that were still hanging out with us, which tells me, you know, I appreciated. Uh, okay, so let's, okay, so uh, 1980 is the year I was born, so, uh, <laughs> so you know how old I am. <laughs> you know what, man, um, let's just say this. Um, 1980 is a great year. I'm earlier than that, so I'm I'm cool, man. We're, we're hanging out with some cool friends. Let's just say that. Uh, with that being said, uh, good morning, and hope you're doing well. Uh, and <laughs> uh, first, I, I'm totally with you, man. I'm totally with you. I do apologize, Tech, for your, for your needs, not for your nerds. Um, although you could have just, you know, you could also catch that name, too, if it's not taken up. Uh, <laughs> uh, Aditya, hey, good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, sabaho, everybody. Hey, man. <laughs> Okay, Sam wins. Sam wins. You you beat me, man. But um, I'm I'm a little bit later. I'm 76. I'm like right far, not that far from where you are. So yeah, we it's cool, man. We're hanging out. We're kicking it. It's always it's always fun. Hey, <laughs> we're turning into a happy birthday to everybody, uh, man. 78. See, we're right around. We're right. We're all around that nice little 40 ish kind of thing. Um, and it is, it is a lot of fun to hang out or just to kick it. Um, I actually played a few hours this morning, a cyberpunk. I got in, I had to clear a few things in there, uh, and I'm progressing in the storyline, uh, trying to see how to be able to remove, well, actually I take that back. If you guys haven't played the game, but I'm assuming everybody did, uh, cyberpunk went through <laughs> the, the old, the old timers club. Oh my God. So, uh, I, I just, I, uh, you're, you're killing <laughs> the old timers. You know, that's what I used to say that about my parents when I was a kid, dude. I appreciate it. I, I remember those times. Um, hey, guys, uh, Supernova 1976. Hey, 1976, right there. See? <laughs> if I to see who's older, uh, that's that's the 2020 for you. Yeah, see, that's, it is it is kind of that weird thing, right? 2020 as a year has been, gone, has been going through so many different how bad could this year go kind of a thing. Um, that it's really interesting to see how things can can I have kind of you know entertain us and engage us, but yes, uh, seventy six is a is a is a is a beautiful year. It's it's a very good vintage actually if you think about it, uh, and uh, definitely did a lot of great things in in um, in many many ways. Uh, <laughs> if there's no way to make it sound like a, a bottle of wine, um, but cyberpunk from a reference thing, uh, I, I realized cyberpunk has been going through a lot of like uh, not necessarily bad publicity, but like some you know interesting going on, uh, interesting things going on with it. Specifically, where um, PlayStation removed the game as well as Microsoft now is removing the game and offering refunds for Cyberpunk uh, for digital purchases. Basically, obviously, the disc game is you're going to have to go to your retailer, uh, but if you purchase it digitally on, let's say, the Xbox One or even using it on a PS4, I think a lot of people had major problems with those versions of the game. Um, the release of the game took forever to come out. Uh, Mehmet is in the comment. Uh, uh, so, so Sam, Sam's not going to jump on the cyberpunk bandwagon. I think you're you're saving yourself from a lot of. Uh, I would probably say a lot of a lot of headaches. Um, so far, from what I understand, Stadia uh, playing it on Stadia has been the most successful version out there, where with the least amount of uh, bugs after the initial wave. Um, and PC uh, gaming has also been the next one. Uh, one. Although I'm not going to lie, though, uh, PC has a lot of like quirks here and there, but nothing that's kind of a showstopper. So I wouldn't call it, let's say, uh, a situation where it just basically shut off like that. I wouldn't be able to play the game. Uh, but I had a few uh, points when I was, like, I was talking to uh, Juan Carlos a couple of days ago on the show and um, where I was playing and my partner in the game at the time, and I want to say her name was Rogue. Um, and, oh, no, no, not Mo, um, Pan Am. Pan Am was, we were working on a mission and then Pan Am was walking with me. We we're in the middle of the desert. And suddenly her character is like, 10 to 20 feet above me walking as if she's walking on the ground and the character kind of followed me back forth and we were going different places and i was trying to figure out a way to get it to set to reset uh, but yes even the pc has some problems although 
uh, the quality of the graphics, which was a big problem, a lot of people were commenting on on the at least on Twitter, from what I noticed, is that the graphic quality on the on the consoles from the PS4 and the Xbox One were very different, much much lower quality than what you would get with the PC. So I think that I don't I don't disagree with people not being happy, especially when it's a brand new release and something that you waited this long to get. Um, Lava's in the comment. Here, uh, we are missing uh, your live stream, and now oh one ten a.m. Oh man, I do apologize. Uh, so hope your live stream is a little earlier. We can join you. So um, first, I want to say I, I, do, I am very sorry for uh, starting later, Lava, I, and that was partially um, there were some things that I need to take care of that were very important in, uh, here in home, and that I need to take care of. And unfortunately, time kind of escaped me. It wasn't gaming. It wasn't anything kind of fooling around, but it was just more like something that yeah, things that I needed to take care of. And with that being said, uh, I didn't want to actually just drop off and not show up and not even have a, a live stream. So um, I will try to see if we can actually bring it up a little bit earlier. I, I agree. I think it works out a little bit better from a timing wise. And I, and I have heard that before where it's a little bit late and I appreciate you hanging out with us here, of course. Um, let me see here. I think I missed the one more. The, the, the comments, by the way, are, seems to be working perfectly fine this morning. Aditya, hey, Aditya is joining us from uh, from the Twitch site this morning. Sabaho, man, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. We're taking, uh, <laughs> we're talking the year of the birth, 1997. Uh, oh, hey, so hey, 1997. See, I'm st <laughs> I'm, I'm raining in the old man tank. Oh my God, we're gonna start. We're gonna we're gonna turn it into the uh, what year did you? No, sorry, I was this old when I discovered. Um, actually, I did discover something interesting this uh, this week um, from TikTok. Of course, as TikTok is the massive knowledge source that it is, um, yeah, we uh, I learned this week that there's um, different ways of opening a can. And apparently, if we've if you've ever opened up a can with your can opener and you always put it on the side and always open it, um, apparently the right way to do it is on the top where you put the can opener slightly offset from the top put it on and open it, it actually opens it up entirely perfectly. The ring on the top removes and you never have to actually try to dig up the metal piece on the inside. So I don't know why I decided to share that this morning, but it is one of those um, one of those things I wanted to talk about, I guess. Um, sucks. Uh, oh, uh, got some expansion mods uh, working on uh, Skyrim. Hey, good. So I, this, I remember you guys were talking about, uh, I think, uh, Sam and Matt were talking about it uh, last week when they were uh, when they had their guest on there, uh, talking about you know Sam's daughter still plays uh, when she started originally with uh, with basically uh, Skyrim in there, and I, I want to say if it was uh, the precursor to Pokemon, but uh, not Pokemon, Pokemon Go. Um, Rolando, 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 yes, Rolando's in the chat. Good morning, my tech reviews. Uh, Donald, hey man, good morning. Uh, my V six, my LG V sixty friend. Dude, I, I hope you saw that in the video. I saw you saw that in the thumbnail. I'm going to be talking about the V60 in just a bit. Uh, can you tell me when you? Uh, oh, uh, when you. <laughs> Uh, will be a public uh, when your hat will be available for public sale. So the hat is available for public sale. It's actually off of. Um, I, I think I need to find the link for it. Uh, it's a gentleman off of Etsy. Uh, I tried going through YouTube uh, with their own little system, but the hat quality material that they kept using there was just not the level. It was more of a. It's just not the same quality. And Alex, I mean, I'm sure uh, Matt uh, Matt can test to that one once he gets in there. Uh, it's the material this guy uses is very, very nice, and it looks really good. Um, I'll I'll definitely try to drop that in the description a little bit later on. If not, hit me up on Twitter, and I'll make sure to mention. I'll show that I'll share that link with you. Uh, but th the hats are amazing. They're very nice. They're comfortable and they're breathable, which really helps me because, especially if you're going in from one room to the other, if you want to wear them for an extended amount of time, you don't want to start heating up. So that's the biggest thing. Uh, but yes, no, thank you for having, well, thank you for joining us, of course, as usual. Uh, let me double check. Hey, Greg. Uh, okay, so you guys are, yes, yeah, a little bit of housekeeping going around. Uh, oh, I discovered uh, fire in the wheel according to, oh, so you guys are playing. Okay, good. I, I see that. Uh, 1997, that's the year I graduated high school. Oh, two years. Well, so roughly about two years before then as well. So 95 was wine uh, right after the, the, the great California earthquake in, of 94, which was a big, a big wake up call for me for California. Let's just say that. Uh, uh, TK Bay and Juan Bagnell are two of my favorite tech viewers, uh, YouTuber, Mr. Comer. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and I appreciate you guys. For everybody that was able to hang out with us during that time, we'll we'll talk. And we're going to talk to Juan Carlos and see if we can uh, work out the timing and make sure that uh, hopefully you know everybody can actually join in and and enjoy it as well. Uh, the show was a lot of fun to do. Honestly, I was I was super excited for it to happen, and. 
the fact that we were able to finally work it out, we, we wanted to kind of a little bit uh, give it some time after the holiday, the Thanksgiving holiday to start it off. And then within the next couple of weeks, just for reference, uh, the show is going to be a, a day early. It's going to be on Wednesday night. Uh, and that's mostly because Thursday evening, as well as the week after, it, you'll have Christmas Eve and then you'll have New Year's Eve, which generally turn out to be more of, if you think about it, um, Actually, if we do it on that New Year's Eve, depending on where you are in the world, we, you could be watching a 2020 show in 2021. So we could we could definitely do that if if he's up for it. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. We'll work out the timing on that. And I appreciate everybody joining it. Um, oh, love is coming. I actually uh, and now after receiving the notification, started watching you live because uh, because of the way they inter interact with you guys and are very informative. I appreciate it, love. Always, always. Um, it, it's one of the things I try to do with the show that. I want to make it a little bit different than some of the other live streams that you've seen in the in the um, um, as far as you see online. A lot of live streams are generally information, and here is going to be the Q and A. But I like my show to be more of a conversation with you guys, so that it kind of goes through, and uh, it becomes like a you know it's a discussion really. I mean, short of having everybody on the actual live stream and jumping in and taking you know questions and so on, which I wouldn't mind doing at some point, trying to open it up to you guys, uh, maybe open it up and then we can have a live conversation. Uh, maybe we can do that for the final show of the of 2020. I I'll, I want to see if that's logistically going to work out uh, without crashing anything on my side, uh, but we'll have to see how that goes. And um, wait, I'll join the YouTube. Chat. <laughs> that's <laughs> with, with chat Sam there. Yeah, no, no. With, that's the cool things, uh, Aditya. I didn't recognize it because I normally see your YouTube logo and I saw the Twitch, which is totally fine. I um, I do stream on Twitch as at the same time as YouTube, uh, mostly because I felt like that kind of gives me the, the broadest coverage. Um, uh, is there anything Salam uh, looks crips? Uh, did you change the camera? No, I think uh, the camera itself is same. Uh, I use the uh, Sony A7S III as my primary camera. It's the same camera that I use for my videos. I think the network or the internet may seem to be working, and I hope it stays that way. I'm going to cross my fingers on that one. I appreciate that, um, and uh, hope you're doing well. I don't know if you're back in Lebanon or if you're you're still in the in uh, in the in Europe, uh, but if you're if you're back home, good luck. Hope you're doing well. Uh, there's a lot of things going on down there. Uh, and Ronaldo, uh, I was enjoying the show until you muted my audio by saying, <clears throat> I'm not going to say the word. Yes, I agree. I, and believe it or not, I didn't realize I said that. I said that word. Um, the uh, <laughs> yes, network, always fun, always fun to have better network connection. Um, the 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 main premise again so hopefully next week we'll also have a good good network connection um we are going to uh, I, I am actually going to have juan run the actual live stream this time so that we see if the network is true you know those like little spinning things that we get every once in a while are they caused on my end or is it caused by uh stream which i think he's uh moving on from and uh yeah and we'll see you there uh, Aditya has, uh, the thursday show was nice technically it was a friday morning for me which so that's the thing i'm saying um, uh, and, but I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to see the discussion, even uh, debate style content with Juan. And we are going to get a little bit more, uh, more debatey as it gets as it moves on. I think that show was mostly intended to be. I call it the origin stories, kind of like you know the beginning, where we are, what we're doing, and where we where we're going from there. Um, and the goal essentially is to progress with that. And it, this is independent from our show, so this is not intended to replace ones or replace mine this is independent this is a collaboration truly a collaboration uh that i felt like was has been in the making for some time let's just say that and oh speaking of which so since we're still talking about juan um i i have to still still say uh, <laughs> am i the only one on twitch no 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 <laughs> i i are um so if you guys haven't had, if you guys caught the show or caught the video, uh, Juan posted a video last week about the FIO Q3. Uh, so it's a pocket amp that works with essentially over USB-C for the best experience, but essentially it's intended to be a pocket amplifier, something that improves the audio quality from any source that you're able to connect to it. And I say that because it doesn't work with everything. Um, initially, I wanted to try it out with my Galaxy Z Fold 2. And for some reason, Samsung's 
USB-C uh, output just does not like, if it's not using the USB-C adapter that you buy from Samsung, it doesn't transfer audio. So audio doesn't transfer uh, through it. And then using that to a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and then from another one, using another adapter back into it to get it into the FIO, felt like it was too much of a daisy chain. So I kind of put that one on the side. Uh, I did test it out with my Find X2 Pro. It works great. I've also been using it almost exclusively with my PCs, both the laptop and the desktop behind me, especially when I'm playing games and just listening to audio and music. And what I really love about it is just the crispness of the audio and the performance difference. And you can hear the difference. Like I plug in straight into the uh, into the desktop or the laptop and um, you listen to audio and then you plug in the FIO, you just so much better, clear. And you have the jog dial a little bit here, just a real quick control, very easy to configure. We have a base boost and a level boost as well on the bottom configurable. And the battery in there will never run out. If you're if you're connected to the PC because you're using USB-C, it works really nice. Um, <laughs> let's see what else we have here. Uh, oh, so uh, please, can, can you say, uh, hey, uh, Sabaho to uh, Mrs. Lozino. I hope you're doing well. I uh, hope your day is doing great. And I also hope you're, just, you know, uh, you're having fun. And uh, uh, make sure you say, <laughs> uh, make sure you, I, I want to say thank you to both you and your husband uh, for hanging out and just checking out the show. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I, I'm glad I didn't miss that one, uh, that one <laughs> going in. Um, Getting the A7S 3 today for the, uh, for my podcast and the channel. Yes, that is very nice. Okay. It took me a while to get mine, and I was so happy to get it. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so, so you say that you use, I definitely have been using it for, for some time, actually. Uh, what's your experience with it being for your primary YouTube live stream cam? And it seems also a uh, Halo uh, <laughs> cam for sure. Um, so first couple of things I will say. Um, definitely turn off or increase the temperature sensor uh, setting that's on the camera. That's the first thing you're going to need to do if you're going to use this for live streaming. Because the first problem I had with this is anything beyond 20 minutes or so, it would just overheat and shut itself down. And that was, if you remember a few, like, I think was it maybe four or five different, uh, five live streams earlier, it happened to me where my camera just literally died. So that would be the first thing I would say. Uh, second thing, once you have that set up, Actually, for the most part, it's super simple and super easy to use. Uh, just download the Connect app that I've been, so I use it on my tablet, but you could use it on any device. And I remote connect to it after I configured it the first time to configure and manually configure the video, switch modes different, uh, increase the ISO, reduce the ISO, just get it to look the exact way that you want. Um, I like it very much. It looks clean um, and the autofocusing is crazy good. Example, as long as I cover my face, you could see here's the FIO. And here I am. Like, I mean, this is how right there. Uh, sorry, upside down FIO TK. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's really nice. Uh, great, especially with the camera, with the lens that I have on this. Um, and I have an external audio connection to it set up on a mount. So uh, it's a great camera. I cannot say good things. I mean, and you know, you know, you're you're in the Sony lifestyle. You definitely appreciate it. Uh, I mean, remember when you when you got your uh, Sony, uh, sorry, this Xperia 1 Mark II, that was, again, it, this is alongside that kind of an experience. Um, although I wished there was a way to get it to configure uh, to to use the A7, sorry, the um, the Xperia 1 Mark II as a as a good maybe B-roll camera like on the uh, every once in a while. But I'll have to see how that goes. Uh, overall, I'm very happy with this A7S3. A7S3. I still have my A7 III. I didn't let that one go, but that's going to be more going to be used for B-roll and other other shots. So for primary camera. Absolutely fantastic, but make sure you change that setting. Uh, the heat sensor will automatically kick in. Uh, once you remove it, I've been able to go for two and a half, two, three hours. Um, it's just that for some reason, even though the camera will warm up, going to the high sensor fixes 90% of your problems because uh, there was a lot of issues and I had to do a lot of research trying to figure out how to get the um, camera to record unlimited in 4K. That was the thing for me. It was recording in 4K because when I record my videos, it kind of goes through there. Um, I, it is super surprising to learn that I still haven't probably driven my DT770 Pros. Oh, man. See, you, you have them. It's exactly. Yeah, so we're talking about the DT770s, right? Eh, of course, I got to let's get it there. So right there, the DT770s Pro, uh, these are are a bliss to just enjoy using. So if you're using it with a v, with an LG device, you probably have enough to be able to drive them and get the really good experience out of them. Uh, but if you want to be able to transfer that over to your PC, using it with you know other devices that are not necessarily built in with a good 
like a good quad back. Like the V60 definitely does a really good job of driving these guys. Um, I appreciate that, you know, of course. Uh, and I, there's a only there's a couple of things that I probably would say after using it for a few days. If there's one thing that I would love for them to do is create some kind of a holster setup for it to be able to clamp it somewhere. Because as I'm using it with my PC, uh, it runs USB-C from one end. And then, of course, the 3.5 uh, mil jack here directly from my DT770s. And for the most part, there's no way to put it. And it's not exactly very grippy. So my this kind of goes back and forth. And I don't want to damage it. As you know, this is a loaner from, from Juan Carlos. So... I probably will be picking up my own and figuring out maybe I can print like a 3D printed um, case for it, something that I can protect it with it. Uh, but we'll have to see because I'm also working on a on a 3D printer video that um, got pushed out that's to January. Seems there there was some concerns there, um, but we'll have to see how that goes. Um, does it affect the battery life significantly uh, on a smartphone when it's plugged in? Um, it only the only thing I would probably say is it doesn't really change much of the performance. The the quad deck is always available for uh, for using your device. And the the main thing you want to keep in mind is when you're listening to audio, unless you're watching it on the video, uh, you're obviously turning off your display, so battery wouldn't really be impacted as much. Uh, for me, with the V60, I think the overall performance that I really enjoyed the most is watching content, and I didn't really re notice any big difference. Difference. Um, the quad deck automatically uh, is there. You can turn it on or not actually activate the quad deck. Uh, the, basically, the amps, uh, some of the functionalities that they have within the V60 is actually a, a toggle that you have to turn on. So you don't have to turn that on, but if you want to drive the higher impedance type headphones like this, you do want to use that and it would make it much better. So I, I appreciate having that there. Uh, <laughs> all that, oh, hey, Davin Davis is in the comment. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, Abishek, uh, yeah, Abishek. Hey, man. Good morning, uh, Davin. Jump in. Sabah uh, TK. I see YouTube is behaving is behaving well. Yes, yes. This this uh, yeah. Last Saturday was like a hole. It was a hole. Let's just say that it was a hole that don't want. We don't want to go back to because we'll we'll fall into that. But yes, uh, alter ego has jumped on 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 Twitch. I appreciate that, man. Um, Oh, so uh, Ronaldo uh, has his A7S III as well on Wednesday. Uh, new toys uh, that they need to learn how to uh, how to use. Uh, Gerald uh, Undone. Oh yeah, uh, it's the guy uh, to go with that comes to that camera. It's a great camera. It's a great camera. I love the new system. It's so much easier to to navigate the new system. Um, I love the fact that we have the dual uh, SD card, which we knew we had from before. Uh, but it's the full size HDMI out with the flippy camera. So from a, from his production style. I think uh, Ronaldo has the same situation. So he was using the GH5, as I'm not mistaken, because I think he's selling that one. If you guys are looking into picking up a GH5, uh, if it's still available, uh, please let us know. Uh, so he did somewhat of the same situation as I did. He went from a GH5 over to the say, A7S III. And the only reason why I didn't, I never used the A7 III as my primary camera was mostly because of that flippy camera, the display option. External control apps that use cameras for cameras like the GH5 uh, or even with Sony never truly replicate what the information that comes on the display, on the back display on the actual unit. And what I mean by this is like audio performance, like the audio meter never transfers over. I can look and I can control my camera from here, but I can never see if there is audio showing up on the camera. And as you've done, if you've ever recorded video, if you've done production style uh, type of work, I, I assure you, you've had this situation where you've recorded a whole bunch of A-roll and you don't realize it that you didn't have audio or audio was really bad till you're done. And then you have to re-record this entire thing. And it killed me because um, the video that I put out on Wednesday, the, uh, the, the, the smart sprinkler, the Yardian sprinkler system, I ended up recording that show twice because the first one, for some reason, there was some type of an interference on the audio that it created like a really bad buzz that went all around and drove me crazy. So short answer, the camera itself is very nice. I'm glad uh, there's more people starting to get them. Mine was delayed. I didn't actually get it from the first wave. Um, I was actually on the pre-order list with... Um, what is it called? B&H. And mine was delayed. But once it came in, I was really excited. <sighs> What do we have? Oh, Vegeta. And um, it was one of those weird things that, you know, like once you get the camera and you're really, really happy and then you notice there's some concerns and you're like, oh my God, please, please make this thing be the right one. So it works. You can record unlimited. works perfectly fine. Uh, 
uh, TK stuck uh, stuck using my Pixel 4 XL for now. You know what though? Honestly, I, I would have to say if there's if there is a device of 2019 that I really remember, really really miss a lot as far as usability. I think the Pixel 4 XL is one of the big ones. Uh, the performance that you get there, the larger display, especially since you have the XL model. And of course, you have some of those gestures if you like to use the solely chip functionality, since you don't have a fingerprint sensor. Uh, it was always nice. And there's a lot of ROMs, a lot of options on the on the uh, you know the development side now for, for this device that still, if you think about it from a horsepower standpoint, it's still the most powerful pixel, the, the latest most powerful pixel available on the market now, not the most features based on the fact that you know we're getting different things released uh, with the feature uh, drop that came in. Uh, Fazil Khan is saying, is, uh, is the Zoom H1, is it a good mic for recording voiceovers with? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. The biggest thing with these things is not necessarily, so the, the H1 is definitely a great mic. What I would recommend you if you're going to do any kind of voiceover, uh, two things. It's uh, where you're recording your voiceover and the way the quality of the audio that you're going to be performing. So what I would say is practice with it at a certain distance and work so that you're always staying with that certain distance and you're projecting in that way. Um, also, you'll find much better sound coming out of that mic if you're using it in a room or an environment where there's not a bouncing uh, materials. An example for me like this office right now. This office, I needed this type of a microphone here, the SM7, mostly because of the way it treats the audio and it actually cancels a lot of the outside audio in the area. And I say that because my laptop behind the mic right now is fan on and it sounds like I can hear it. For me, it sounds really good, really loud. Uh, for you guys, you probably don't even hear it and it doesn't register. So uh, if you're doing it with the H1N, uh, H1N, um, all I would say is make sure you have enough dampening material. If you don't, and if you're, let's say, working on a laptop, get a sheet, like some kind of a, a bed sheet or something like that that you have. Cover the laptop's monitor, cover yourself in the background, set up the microphone and start doing your voiceover. Your audio is going to be so crisp and very good and you'll have a lot less uh, echoey effects and your 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 volume or your audio won't bounce off too many materials so that's always going to be the the nice thing but the h1n is definitely one of my favorite i started off with the h1n for the longest time and i didn't use it specifically for what you were using it as a microphone i was using it as a pass-through amplifier for my camera um, and at the time i think i was using my 70d the canon 70d uh, and so what I would do is run my lav mic through the H1N and then from the H1N into the camera and the audio became so much nicer. Uh, also gave me the ability of running uh, dual audio recording so that I never have a problem. If for any reason, let's say the audio on the camera got busted like what I've had in the past, uh, that system used to give me redundancy because I would record on the H1N and then use the audio from there. Uh, current system doesn't support that. I've kind of moved on a little bit, uh, which I could still benefit from it since I think I have, I have the H5 now. Uh, and I do use that every once in a while. Uh, oh yeah, so that was the, uh, that was Greg's comment right there. And hold on, let me sc scroll a little bit down. Oh, Donald, uh, TK, uh, TK, I can't find your hat uh, on Etsy's uh, account. Let me see if I can find it. Because uh, it's one of those weird, weird things where I had the link and I need to just hit, where is the gentleman? Da -da 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 -da. I'll give it a second. Um, Oh, here it is. So uh, the gentleman, the guy's site is called Mr. Stitch Ups. And let me see if I can get the link off what I have from him. Because we set it up originally, creator da, 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 here. OK, oops, let's see if we can do this. So I'm going to I'm going to throw this in the chat. Uh, Donald, let me know if this works for you. Hopefully. So that should be in the chat right now. Hmm. we're doing good we're doing that was the first one donald <laughs> you got the first one uh and let me jump in here just double check thank you thank you aditya i always appreciate it man uh thank you for uh for tweeting it out and so hopefully that gets that gets the answer there uh more <laughs> <laughs> more coffee it is actually it's uh just black iced coffee that's usually what i have in here um i just like to sip on it as usual and if you guys kind of figured it out over time um i always start with a full cup and by the time the show is over it almost is always at the end so it kind of works out really nicely um 
IR is dumping the Pixel 4 XL is a great device. I'm rocking it as well. Perfect size for me. That's the size. That's the thing about it. When I when I got into the whole, uh, you know, the Pixel the Pixel 4 A XL, it's the size of the display that I always appreciated, and it's just the, the real estate. The Pixel 5 is a great phone, um, but I. I think I spoke too soon last time, guys. I think I spoke too soon. I, I said that the internet was behaving and everything was great, but we're getting a lot of circles. Uh, we'll have to see. I hope I hope it doesn't cause me to have to kind of restart the whole thing. Uh, Abdul Rahim, uh, good night. Keep up the good work. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Hope you have a good night. Uh, let me see here. Okay, so uh, I mainly use... Oh, so he uses the Atmos Ninja 5 uh, to record. Okay, so you're using an external recorder. Nice. Uh, but it doesn't support uh, uh, sorry active mics or many times uh, sorry active mics and uh, many times I didn't get the audio when when I was using the GH5 I hated it uh, yes the GH5 uh, is still available on Swappa and link is on Twitter so if you guys are interested uh, he has a kit actually not just a, not the way I was selling mine which was just the camera and the and the actual lens. Uh, but short answer is, yes. if you're looking for a great camera with great autofocus options, a great camera for YouTube, that's the best way I would explain it. Uh, the GH5 as a camera when it first came out did have some concerns, but they did update a lot of it. A lot of the software updates that they pushed out did fix a lot of the uh, focusing concerns. But one of the things I loved about it was the flippy display, also how quiet it was. It was one of the first cameras that I had where focusing on it was not a loud process. And, you know, the camera, the kit lens that at least I was able to pick up at the time uh, did provide that experience. It was very nice, very crisp. Uh, the only thing that I uh, that I had with uh, with that at the time is just I wanted to move over to Sony. I wanted to use all Sony glass and I wanted to full up, move on, move over to uh, full frame. So the GH5 is a micro four thirds camera. So you you have the benefit of both worlds. But once you go full frame, especially on a Sony camera, you truly want to baby keep everything together. So that's why I have the A7, A7S3 uh, and of course the A7 III as well. Um, as part of my arsenal now. Um, nope, uh, here, nothing. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. So yeah, no, Greg, the, the, the microphone itself is actually really nice. The SM7 is very, very good. And um, again, thanks to Aditya, our resident uh, audio, some audio guy uh, is the amazing guy because he helped me with this. I, essentially, at the beginning when I started, I was trying to use a Bluetooth mic. And that was not a great option. So I ended up getting this with a cloud lifter uh, and then running it uh, over here on my uh, Scarlet, uh, and it works beautifully, uh, the, uh, the config configuration that we have there. Um, Lightside09, hey, TK, do you think that the Chinese companies will take out um, companies like LG and Sony from the market eventually? It's hard to tell if the, the Chinese uh, phone manufacturers will actually overtake because at the end of the day, when you start looking at um, the the market share that we're we're seeing right now is that LG and Sony are both known for other techs, right? They're not just known for their smartphones. So LG makes displays, makes TVs, uh, makes actually home appliances and everything. So they're not just in it for smartphones, where some of the other companies that you're looking into are primarily smartphone companies. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm talking about Realme. Realme is not releasing a, a, a you know a TV in the near future. So uh, when we start looking at some of the other companies on the market, like, you know, OnePlus is trying to start going into TVs. So we saw the OnePlus TV, I think it was last year in 2019, they released that. Uh, it was using a MediaTek processor. It was a great uh, first, you know, introduction of that tech, but we didn't see them follow it up in this year. So I'm not sure if they're going to go with it. Um, LG and Sony are both there and they're going to be around even if they're not there in smartphones technology. And I'll say that because meaning having a phone. Uh, a lot of the cameras that we see on our phones now are 90% Sony sensors. Sony IMX sensors are in 90% of the devices. And if they're not Sony, like the, uh, the brand new Sony sensors, they're using maybe older ones. So, and LG displays go in many devices that you see on the market because again, companies need components and Sony and LG are in there. As far as smartphones, I can say that obviously they're not holding the same presence as they used to. Sony is definitely doing a big comeback in 2020. The Xperia 1 Mark II, the Xperia 5 Mark II, both has shown us that Sony listens to what the consumers are looking for from their devices and they're answering it. So we're starting to see some comeback there. V60, the, v, the, the Velvet, and then of course the, uh, the LG Wing, again, LG is bringing it back with many different things. So they're trying to go in with what they're trying to feed into the consumer base that is very different. So 
is it likely that we'll see an overtaking of that? Maybe at some point, if Sony and LG don't keep, you know, doing or they don't, uh, pr you know, continue in the the footsteps that they set themselves up on in 2020, which I think are great. So we'll have to see. Uh, I don't, I don't foresee them basically dropping out entirely from the conversation, but it may just morph into what it's going in. And the Explorer program from LG right now is definitely on par. Um, the one thing I probably would say for this year, if when it comes to Sony, is I'm still trying to see or trying to find out what's going on with the Sony Xperia Pro. The Xperia One or Xperia Pro was announced at the same time as the Xperia One Mark II at the beginning of the year, and literally with like 22, I would say no, it's not sorry, 22, like 12 to 12, 13 days left. We, I'm, I'm hoping we hear something. I haven't seen anything on that yet, so we'll have to see. Uh, oh, <laughs> I posted the comment once, and it, I realized that it posted twice. Um, uh, Faisal Khan is saying is thank you so much. Also, I'm using the Galaxy S20 now. Definitely, uh, is it worth upgrading uh, for the Galaxy S21 next year? Uh, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Actually, you know, let's let's start doing that. Actually, I, I do want to talk about this article, which I feel like is very important. So let's go ahead and hear. Da, da, da. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. So let's go ahead and do screen sharing. And let's close a few things here. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> okay, so here, uh, let's do screen share. So I'm going to bring you guys in on the on the other side here. We're going to look at an article that was just posted on uh, XDA. So let's do this right. Boo! Great. Uh, so this article is actually starting to talk about the Snapdragon 888 benchmarks. Um, Qualcomm seemed to have released a video that was shared with XDA, um, and they posted the video, I think, at the bottom of the, the show short answer. So here, yeah. Uh, and the, so the article is by Michelle Rahman. Uh, he posted it, and they're talking about the Ant22 and the scores that we saw. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to end up being a really big, hold on, let's see, save image, because I think it's, let's just save that. Let me open it. Because I can't zoom in with with their site. I think they kind of like that. And here we are. So the overall scores that we're looking at here are general. Those are those are scores that were shared from uh, Qualcomm. From basically, uh, they shared it directly on their site. Uh, it's through XDA, and we can see definitely a massive improvement, if nothing else, like on the Geekbench, the N22, and all of that stuff. From a sense of just point of reference, uh, when we look at this type of data and what we see essentially with Michelle's analysis here, showing us the, the performance that they're projecting between the 865, the 855, and the 888. So when we go multi-core, uh, as far as Geekbench, a single core, we're looking from 1929 to 1930, because I remember OnePlus's best score for me was like 1931. Uh, not, so not 19, 931. Here we're seeing an average about 9, 929, uh, and it's bumping up to 1135. So there's definitely going to be an improvement in performance uh, when it comes to perform, you know, for going from the S20 to the S21. Uh, and of course, with the multi-core, you're going from 3450 to 3797, 94. So basically, about I would say, you know, it's actually a pretty decent uh, 250 roughly uh, points up. So the, the main benefit is depends on what you're looking for. Are you happy with the, what the S21 or the S20 is doing for you? Meaning, um, you already have 5G, you already have a you know the refresh rate that we get with the the S20 line of devices, and you're still obviously looking at a large battery, fast charging, the, all of the things that you enjoy about it. I think the S21 from the leaks that we're looking at right now, the biggest change that's going to be, it's going to be that S Pen functionality with the extra case. If you're looking to get S Pen functionality, which I don't really think a lot of people are going to jump on that. It's great to have the way they're selling it because you need to buy that extra case. But the question would be is where would that fit into the ecosystem? So we'll have to see how it comes out. The overall daily activities of what you're doing with this is not going to be a big difference. Uh, it's truly going to come down to when you're trying to do more multi-core, single-core functionalities. Like if you're rendering, you're exporting, you're doing some type, of some type of heavy lifting on the phone. If you're using it just for social media pictures, uh, emails, uh, you know, general editing pictures here and there in Snapseed or you know, Google Photos and so on, I don't think there's a big enough of a difference. Typically, I, uh, I recommend if you're going to upgrade from a series to a next. So if you're on the 20, I would go for the 22. If you're on the, uh, you know, any earlier generation, it's just that we haven't been seeing this massive leap of change between one series to the other. Uh, the big change, obviously, this year is going to be where the there is no more Note series and that the S Pen is going to be available for everybody. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, but 
Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're literally from a, a, week, a month away or so from the S21 official announcement um, from rumors and what we're seeing essentially is that in January will be when they're going to announce it. So we'll have to see how that goes. I appreciate that. Uh, I know Greg's Greg's like TK froze. I know I this is it, it did it twice in like less than 10 minutes. I was very surprised. Uh, so Sam Sam's Sam's conundrum, I think. So you're thinking, Sam, I, I'm not sure if it's the headset. Every once in a while, there's that whole echo thing that goes on. Um, truly, truly, if I think if you're able to pick up a blue, either a Yeti or even a blue, um, uh, like the, the, the globe, the little ones, uh, those will work really nice for you. If you're connected over a PC anyways, a USB mic would definitely be a big benefit for you. The only difference about that is the proximity where you're sitting, because if you're sitting, I, I, I'm imagining you sitting in front of your laptop, but you're far away, like the way I am, you're going to need some kind of a stand. Otherwise, um, the other one, uh, the other one that I've actually I've been listening to, uh, I use the um, oh, man, the Logitech G, uh, the, the Logitech X gaming headset that has actually a pretty decent microphone on it, and it actually works pretty good. The only kicker there is about a couple of hundred bucks for the for the mic. Short answer is I'm sure there's there's going to be enough specials going on. The Yeti is one by far one of the best microphones. You're able to set it up right in front of you. And just all you have to do is maybe have it slightly off uh, off camera so that it doesn't uh, you know cover anything. And it's just going to work perfectly for you. And it'll, it'll take care of any kind of echo issues that you have, uh, especially with, you know, but you can still use your headset for audio there. Um, it, it could also be YouTube. I'm I'm wondering if it's YouTube because it does it on both YouTube and Twitch. So it either is YouTube or it's uh, StreamYard having some concerns there. Uh, we should try Twitch. Yeah, I know. No, Greg's like, we should try Twitch there. Um, told you not to say anything. <laughs> it, 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 it's always going to be in that situation. Um, Davin Davis is jumping in. TK, I like the Pixel 4 X, the Pixel 4 XL. I just couldn't justify grabbing uh, grabbing one with my Pixel 3 XL still running well. I, I agree. The, the Pixel 3 XL if you if you're running the uh, 3 XL and you were happy with it, there was a little bit of a compromise uh, when we went to the Pixel 4 XL. You lost the fingerprint sensor. That was a big thing. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the 3 XL was the last series that had a headphone jack where we went over to the Pixel 4 and we didn't have that. So there's a few gives and give and takes there. And the Pixel 3 XL still performed quite well. Um, there was a video on Android Authority, I think that was posted by David Amell, uh, talking about the ev evolution of uh, so, uh, sorry of Google pixel lenses and how Google should basically start investing in a different sensor as opposed to just relying heavily on the computational photography that they're using because a lot of camera a lot of companies now are closing or they're bridging that gap where Google was exceeding and when it came to camera photography so I, I there was a few things that went there and I, I agree with David I think at some point we do need to see slightly different sensors in there the 12 megapixel the 12.2 megapixel sensor that they've been using is a very tried and true sensor uh, but I think to be able to push the limits or push some of the functionalities, we'll have to see what they do. Um, we still have not officially heard of the sequel of the sequel uh, to the, uh, I would say the 7 series, the 765G that we saw, or the 765 uh, processor from Qualcomm. Hopefully we'll hear about that soon. Uh, the 888 is definitely a big one. I saw somewhere that the 6 series is getting a new upgrade as well, but uh, officially we're still waiting for the 7 series. Uh, and appreciate it yeah definitely sorry so a buddy of mine just hit me up on, on uh telegram uh let's see here i think i've skipped a few comments i think here okay da, da, da. <laughs> uh oh definitely um <laughs> uh, Ser serbifius serbifius ah serbifius hopefully i'm saying that correctly good morning and welcome welcome dude i appreciate it uh oh donald thank you Gra glad you were able to find it uh da, 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 da. let me see here i think i'm I, I, so what happens for me on the comments by the way if i'm if i answer if we're discussing a, a comment and then i let it go it just builds up so many comments below it and then when i try to scroll a little bit i move my mouse it just shoots up so i have to kind of scroll back up to catch uh where where we were before uh Okay, so here was it because that was Sam. We were talking there. I think Davin Davis, we talked about the Pixel XL. Exactly. Definitely here. And uh, by the way, uh, why are you not getting views like before? Visiting your channel uh, after a long time. I appreciate that. Uh, Faisal, I, I'm not sure what's going on with uh, with YouTube lately. Um, I'm honestly, I keep doing what I what I what I enjoy doing and I keep hanging out with you guys and we we tend to we'll see how things go. 
um, seems lately things that I normally would produce or post that would normally have, especially when, if you look at it from the base uh, um, and understanding your analytics, um, one thing you will uh, you'll start realizing over time is there are certain things that your fans like to watch. And those are the videos that typically do quite well. I'm not sure if it's basically just because of the end of the year and I have a lot of backlog of things that maybe it just doesn't resonate with many people. But you know, it, we'll make it work. It's not. It's it's at the end of the day, um, I we will figure out what it is, and we'll have to go. And honestly, uh, algorithm changes thinking. Everyone. Uh. Okay, sorry. Uh, da, 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 da. I was just double checking. I got an email as we're going here. Okay, so uh, I, we're back, and uh, <laughs> StreamYard is definitely just going through its thing. Uh, da, da, da. So Davin Davis is jumping in. So the Chinese OEMs uh, may have an uh, an interesting time in 2021, too, to the geo. Uh, uh, okay, the, the geopolitics this year. It seems so. It seems so. One thing that we saw this week also in the uh, in the news uh, is uh, DJI is going to be going in on somewhat of an interesting uh, uh, approach. Uh, they're in the same boat, slightly different uh, position now where they're going to be forced to start selling their own hardware straight from their site and not being able to sell it on third party sites because of some restrictions that were, uh, were put on uh, their hardware. Uh, I don't have the full story on that one other than the fact that it was recently updated and added. They've they've been in and out of the conversation in the past uh, where, you know, the, uh, the U.S. has uh, recommended not, you know, using them and so on. But that was it was more of a recommendation. Now they're actively kind of working on it. Uh, no specifics on my end. Uh, what was the cause for that? But we'll have to see. Um Oh, Faisal is saying is Realme TV is already available here in India. OK, take that back. So, um Yes, so you, but you could see basically that you know the um, what I would probably say is at the component level though where where I think was I was jumping in with uh, with the LG and Sony side, LG and Sony not not only provide hardware, uh, meaning they don't just make phones, they make the components that go into the phone. So the sensor that's in the Sony phone, the sensor that's in the Realme phone, a sensor that's in a Xiaomi and Oppo, a OnePlus, all of these sensors. When you see the word IMX, the Sony IMX, that is a Sony sensor. And believe it or not, Sony makes more money off of those components than they make on smartphones. But they do are, but they're still in that market. LG does the exact same thing. LG is known for their displays, so your TVs, your monitors, and you get you know other things that they're making. So when you buy a device that has a display that's made by LG, that's also a big factor for what LG is. So their presence or in in the market is bigger than just an LG V60 and an LG Velvet or an LG Wing or even a Sony Xperia. It, it's beyond that. Like for us, the camera is here. I'm using a Sony camera. My overhead camera is a Sony camera. Primary camera is a Sony. There's a lot of things to keep that in there uh, when they're going there. But uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. Um, I didn't realize Realme made TVs. I, but it, that could also be because like, because of the market. Uh, we don't tend to see a lot of reviews on Realme TVs, uh, at least not on the YouTube side from my end. Um, hold on, let me just bring that up here. IR is dumping in. Um, how is Google and Facebook ha okay have have trained okay so have behaved by offering free services and eliminating competition in similar uh, is similar to what Chinese manufacturers have done with the smartphone space by offering cheaper devices with decent specs eventually when most of the uh, most of the competition is gone they can then start increasing the prices and in long term game I, I get, in my opinion that's the long term game um so Yes, it's a tactic that we've seen in the past before. Sell at a loss to a certain point until you are able, able to get the market share. When you start having that consumer base, you start creeping up with the prices. Um, I'm not sure if, if it's going to end up being where they're able to eliminate. because So the person that's going for an LG, the person that loves getting an, a Samsung or a Sony phone, are not going to be swayed easily unless the price was the biggest factor. And at that point, they're not really more of a Sony fan or an LG fan. They're more of a, they were trying to get the best bang for the buck. Uh, devices from other Chinese OEMs are definitely a lot cheaper. I agree. Uh, we've seen many devices being released on the market that are decent spec, uh, decently spec, but you know, priced at a mid range or even a budget friendly device. And the fact of the matter is it's components are getting cheaper. There's the difference here. Um, the companies, when they're selling devices, when they're building their hardware, when they're factoring in how much they're able to sell, there are different pieces of the uh, of the equation that you have to factor in. Um, 
First, it's what are they offering and what are the compromises that they're going in with, right? So if you're getting a smartphone that, yes, say, uh, let's say has a large display, but it has a very slow charger, a large battery, but it's still, again, slow charging. There's that compromise where it, it gets you kind of almost there, which if you're okay with it, that's a perfect situation. But I don't feel like it's going to remove the other side. There's always going to be a need for a higher end model that has... I feel like that they've paid attention to the details, like giving us a quad jack, giving us a better headphone jack, not just having a headphone jack, but getting us a better headphone jack out of that phone. Both LG and Sony are giving us great audio quality there. Now, we did notice that LG is starting to go around. They may be going into the removing the headphone jack. I hope they don't. But if they do, I'm hoping that their solution for the removing it is still something that supports a high quality audio output. Uh, Sony brought the headphone jack back in 2020. That is a big difference from a company that took it away and they basically said we didn't need it to bring back. And not only that, bring it back with a good supported audio DAC. So there's a benefit there. Um, what we will probably see is it may end up being, it may end up impacting the sales for these companies, but I don't think that they're going to be disappearing. I think as long as there's a demand, as long as there's innovation being done at their level, that's what the OEMs, if you think about it, the budget sci fi uh, selling devices uh, thrive on. It's the new flagships and new features because that's what they're able to bring in in the next iteration. And hopefully by then, Sony, LG, and other main ca companies can actually also bring in more innovation. I hope that we don't get into a situation where um, all we have essentially is uh, essentially a few OEMs running from, you know, like that are that are used to sell their devices for a cheap price and now they're jacking up the price. We'll have to see, but I think there's always going to be a good balance between demand and competition as long as we have enough players in the game. That's where it becomes scary. It's when you start seeing things disappearing, meaning less competition. Um, Greg, uh, Max Lee did an LG wing, uh, video. He loves it. Absolutely. Yeah. No, the, the wing is, is a fun phone, um, through and through, not just from using it, but it's also by just, you know, having it in your hand, that flick is just addicting. Um, I hope this, uh, I hope the Sony, pl uh, puts out the Snapdragon 888 and the Snapdragon, oh, and the Xperia Pro for next year. That would be my next, uh, my next thing I would probably say is if, if you are going to delay the Xperia Pro and being that we're so close to the eight, uh, sorry, the 888, in my mind, I always, I always kept thinking that it was going to be the 875, but we went to the 888. Um, I hope so uh, for a couple of reasons, two things, a, uh, because of the integrated modem that we can back now. So the 865 decided to go with the separate modem and uh, the chipset. So the SOC, uh, the modem, the X55 modem was not integrated into the uh, processor or the main chip. Now with the Snapdragon 888, we're seeing a, a return back to integrated uh, X50, uh, the X60 modem, sorry. And now we should be able to get better connectivity. It also supports global, um, basically global 5G support from sub six, um, low band and mid band, ultra uh, UW for ultra wide band. So all of the supported functionalities. And my hope essentially is with that generation is that in the US we'll be able to start seeing 5G on Sony devices. That was one thing in 2020 that I felt like was a little bit, um, I feel like I'm not saying it's a it's a it's a it's a miss. It's more of because of the the fragmentation of what we have in the U.S. Uh, Sony chose not to try to to work on only one and not the others, and so they, it gave us basically a, a really good 4G LTE modem built in there, which is the X55. We just we didn't have the the 5G turned on in the U.S. So we'll have to see. Uh, Greg is responding. To somebody I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, على عصرية أهلا جميل أكرهها حرفيا لو سمحت Okay, so I think uh, Alaa wanted me to read his name or read the sentence he's saying that it sounds really nice. Um, Serfia, hey Tika, do you have any uh, any info on the ColorOS community forums? Uh, my European users, uh, I'm a European user, and I can't seem to be, to log in in uh, as oh since he's been able to he hasn't been able to log in since August. Uh, this means that I can't leave feedback or even uh, for the development about the new Color OS um, OTA. I don't have a lot of input, but I will reach out to some of my contacts over at, uh, at uh, Color OS. I was I was in touch with them originally back at the beginning when we started with the Color OS beta release on the Find X2 Pro. Um, but I'll, I'll I'll get in touch. If um, my question would probably first thing is, have you? Uh, 
I'm wondering, is, is there a reason why you haven't tried maybe possibly trying to set up a separate account? Is that the concern or is it just the account that you have is having a problem and maybe a, a password reset or contacting the admin, uh, see if there's anything concerning that? Because I don't know if, what the cause specifically for not being able to log in or, or is that a widespread concern? Maybe that's a better question as well. Uh, a bigger emphasis on machine learning and image processing uh, processing this year from Qualcomm. And I think that's the biggest thing that we need to kind of move forward, right? Hardware-wise, we're getting a lot of... I mean, we're, we already have hardware that's more powerful than what we kind of need on, on the daily, if you think about it. Uh, machine learning is definitely going to be def uh, something that's a big uh, push for us. Uh, the 888 is also featuring a triple ISP, the ability of processing three different streams of uh, camera streams uh, for image processing at the same time gets going up obviously from the dual ISPs that we had back with the 865. So there's a lot of new improvements that they're putting in there. Um, also the ability of actually uh, getting better video recording, getting much better video recording with HDR uh, video recording. I'm really looking forward to checking those out. Um, we know for a fact, at least from the initial announcement during the, uh, the during the show, um, that we're probably going to be seeing something from Oppo, something from uh, Xiaomi, and of course the Samsung in the beginning of 2021. So all of them, the the Mi 11, the Oppo Find X3 Pro, and of course the S21 will be the biggest flagship. Um, although, keep in mind that Samsung is still going to be uh, going in with the dual uh, the dual configuration from what it seems. Uh, European market and I think Asian market, uh, it's going to be basically using these uh, the Exynos 1080 as opposed to using uh, the Snapdragon 888 in the US. So that's still going to be their their primary drive, at least of what they're going in right now. So we'll have to see there. Um, no SD card. I, okay, I'm not sure, Meister, if you were referring to, it depends on the model of the phone. I think Samsung's last year, uh, depending on which version of the phone that you got, is the one that you got with and without an SD card. So, like, you know, the Note 20 didn't have an SD card support, but the Note 20 Ultra did. So, it depends on what they do. Uh, I may be jumping into a conversation I, I didn't start at the beginning with. Uh, the performance of Boom isn't, uh, isn't as stark, uh, as stark from the 855 to the 865. Uh, Qualcomm might be uh, focusing more on user experience and uh, 5G and its battery optimization for the 888. I think that's the biggest, biggest change as well. One thing we didn't see in 2020 was uh, any emphasis, uh, very, I'll take that back. We saw some companies focusing on battery health and battery performance. Uh, the Snapdragon 888 with the new Qualcomm Quick Charge technology that we're seeing, the ability of going all the way up to 100 watts, there obviously brings in the need for more optimizations and better performance. Uh, going to the five nanometer processor, uh, you know, the architecture on the 888 provided us less power consumption, more power efficiency, and of course, more throughput. So we saw an improvement by using less. And of course, everybody's moving to five nanometers now. Um, and I like what they're doing. I'm not skeptical of what the performance is. My concern at the end of the day is how much is this going to end up basically causing the devices to go? Are we are we, are we we going to see a big bump in price? Are we going to see a gradual bump in price? Or do we actually basically start getting into the point where everybody's phones now are $1,000 plus? That's the market that we need to kind of start looking at. Um, Sony, not Sony, um, I think Samsung learned quite quickly with the Note 20 line release that the demand for the Note 20s was not as high as they anticipated, that, that people were not comfortable paying $1,000 for that phone. And that price adjusted very quickly. Like you saw it a week after it was released, a $200 drop. That was just crazy. $200 for somebody, and especially for people that pre-ordered it, that's a big kicker. Um, so, But it, luckily, people that pre-ordered it would still be able to obviously get the difference because it was within their return policy. But we'll have to see. We'll we'll have to see. Some of the leaked uh, pricing that we're looking at right now are, um, I'm not going to say concerning, but I'm saying almost like they're not reading the market. That's the concern that I'm looking at. Uh, and also the fact that we're not going to be seeing a charger in the box, which to start off with is, so uh, Samsung did something different than what Apple does with their chargers. They did provide you with a fast charger. They gave you the 25 watt charger in the box. So that was one thing. And then if you wanted to get the 45 watt charger, you would just pay the you know, buy the 45 watt charger, but the 25 did a great job. It wasn't like the 15 watt charger and 18 watt charger that you got. So 25 was decent, but to remove that out of the box and then say, well, you want to buy a charger. That's a $45 accessory. My thing would be honestly, this, this, this process or this, um, follow me kind of a mentality, I would say we really need to kind of get out of it. The companies that are charging or the people that the companies that follow Apple's uh, basically, um, what I would probably say is uh, 
mindset. You know, if Apple removes a charger out of the box and they decide to move a charger out of the box, think about what you're doing. The consumers that are impacted by the original uh, statement from Apple were basically Apple users. Only Apple users didn't have to use it. Now, Samsung, by following suit, is telling everybody that, hey, we follow, Sam we, we follow uh, sorry, Apple all the way. We've been following them for years and we're going to follow them again because we feel like the same. We can save, you know, save the environment. And, and, and it would be really funny if they go up on, on the announcement and that was their shtick. We're saving the environment for not putting a charger in the box. And then, but we could buy it in a separate box for more money. I don't know. And then still charge for more money. But that's, that's the conversation. Um, I feel like it, it's been going on. It's like a broken record sometime. If you think about it, that's how it's been going on, but we'll have to see. Um, Let's see here. I think I jumped in the. Da, da, da. Okay, so that was there, and I think uh, a bigger emphasis on machine learning. I think that was yeah. We jumped into the OSD card, the performance. I think I should be. <laughs> uh, you know, TK, the uh, the enhanced four G LTE is really good. Yes, no, definitely, it's it's definitely working on uh, the the upgrades on the, the the new systems for sure, for sure. Um, so Meister is saying that the node isn't canceled yet, and you're you're right. We haven't heard anything on the node yet because obviously we're too early in that in the year. The rumors that originally started with that is that once you give an S Pen to the S series, there is a less of a need for people to go buy the note. That was what made the note special in 2020. If we looked at it from a sense of just development, right? The S20 had three size, three different. You had 20, the 20, uh, 20 plus, and the 20 Ultra. 20 Ultra had the biggest display, biggest battery, biggest sensor, all of the best things of the device. 45 watt charging, 5,000 milliampere, all the good things. At the end of the year, where typically Samsung makes the Note a the flagship of what they offered in that year, they didn't. They went with a slightly higher processor, a slightly overclocked version of the 865 with the 865 Plus in the US. But outside of the US, everybody got the Exynos 990. And that kind of showed us a change in Samsung's approach to the Note. Um, the battery wasn't as big. It was a 4,500 milliampere battery. The charging speed was 25 watt, not 45 watt. Again, somewhat of a downgrade from the S20 Ultra. And that was the Ultra, by the way. The Note 20 Ultra is what showed a down, more of a, a reduction in feature. So if we follow this, that, that trend right there and they take the S Pen, that one unique feature that I felt the note is what it stood on. The note, if anything, stands on the fact that it carries an S Pen. It, yes, it carries it in the silo. Once you remove that and you put that into the S line and you give it the same features, then you're going to have a hard time selling a note in, in a true fashion unless the note suddenly becomes something else. So those those are the reasons why I, I we, we feel like the note line, even if it's not officially canceled, even if they do release a note 20 or note 30 and 20, uh, you know, next year or no, sorry, note 20, uh, note 21. Um, it's going to be a harder sell for Samsung to, to try to keep that market there because they are basically taking away the one feature that made that device special and giving it to, uh, to their S series, which coincidentally, for reference, their S line of devices is their most popular of their flagship devices. Between the Note and the S, the S sells way more than the Note. So they, I know what they're trying to do, obviously. They're trying to capitalize on their most popular products. So the A series, the S series, but so far, We'll have to see. Uh, officially, yes, I, I agree. They didn't make the announcement. So I think that's one of the things we have to keep in mind. Uh, let me see here. Yes. Uh, uh, Ibrahim. Uh, uh, Greg said that I saw something somewhere saying uh, that, but I couldn't remember. Okay, so I think they're referring something back with Aditya. Uh, oh, see, I just jumped like 20 different comments real quick. Uh oh, okay. So Severus is saying is he tried using the Oppo ID from the X Find X2 Pro. Uh, then I created a new Oppo ID and it's still low luck when logging in. I get stuck on the Oppo profile. I'll, I'll I'll forward it over. Okay, so it sounds like it may be just a little bit more with that. Um, so uh, Ra <clears throat> sorry, Rolando saying is uh, Sony LG really don't have uh, don't have a lot of. Okay, they're not looking really to sell a lot of high-end devices. As long as they make um, a phone that is good, just imagine how much money they would make. Uh, they would make on a sensor that just uh, that, that, that yeah that just keeps selling uh, from year over year. I absolutely. I think this is where we really forget 
Sony, when we say Sony as a phone company, it, we we can't really compare Sony as a phone company to let's say um, OnePlus or Oppo as a as a phone company. Now, Oppo and OnePlus, uh, we're saying take that back. Oppo as a company has a lot more products that are on the market that are that are released under Oppo's name. Uh, but just from the sense of what they offer, if you think about it, like I said, Sony sensors are in almost every phone that's on the market. So just think of that when we think of how Sony does. When you take that and then you also factor in that they also sell smartphones, they're truly trying to feed into a, a unique, you know, the niche users. They know Sony camera fans are Sony camera fans for a long time. They don't just get into Sony and get out. So the same way where if you're with any other kind of, you know, carrier. So short answer, they're definitely not hurting, but we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, uh, Lulu, uh, Lulu, Sari, uh, Sari, Sariu. So Lulu Sariu, so hopefully I'm saying that right. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, oh, dude, anytime, appreciate it. And like I said, I, I will forward a note over to uh, the Color OS team regarding the European team and see if they are facing some concerns. Um, conversely, if you don't, make sure to double check in, uh, on Facebook, there's a few Color OS update uh, forums that I'm a part of uh, that I feel like they're also really good to touch, basically just to be in the community. I think they, they do have a lot of European members as well. Uh, definitely here. Davin is jumping in. Uh, oh, Davin is, I think, responding back to Greg. Uh, I've always used Xiaomi uh, um, as as an as is, and my Mi Pads uh, um, it it runs uh, it runs fine. Um, um, I just I just thought that they uh, they went backward on Mi or twelve uh, on my Mi nine. So Mi or twelve depends on which version that you're getting, right? So there is going to be another update that's going to be coming up very soon. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, sorry. I keep getting notifications from things and I don't want to be another surprise package delivery. Um, so yes, the Mi, the Mi 12 for initial release was a Mi 12 based on Android 9. The Android, sorry, Android 10. The Android 11 update Mi 12 is starting the rollout to at least the Mi, uh, the Mi 10 Pro, if I'm not mistaken. So at some point, you, we may start seeing some more improvements done with Mi UI 12. And it depends if you're a big fan. So it depends on where it's going on. So, but I, I agree the... Um, some devices from Xiaomi, I think, mostly run really nicely on their own. Uh, but if you're into more of a stock, more uh, more customization options, there's a big development community goes on there. The main thing that you want to keep in mind is that you will need to unlock your bootloader, which means after a you know, certain amount of time, you'll have the ability of doing so. Uh, and just make sure to back up your data before you, you go there. Let me double check here. Uh, Davin's jumping in. TK, um, OEM should put a, a coupon in the box to buy the accessory when they don't put the... Uh, that's actually not a bad idea, Davin. Uh, I think it's it, realistically as a show of support, at least for the first generation. So the way they... Um, I'll, and I always like to bring up kind of examples. So in the past, if you've... Part, not this year, but I think in 2019, if you've ever purchased a device from Samsung, you always got a little adapter, a USB Type-A to USB Type-C adapter that enabled us to basically use the USB-A to C cable that's in the box to connect to our old phone and transfer our data. That little dongle no longer exists in the box because uh, and last year, I think, with the S line, uh, Samsung would allow you to call them on the uh, to call customer service and you can request one for free. So they would ship it to you for free, but they didn't include it in the box. And now with the Note 20, you no longer get those. So basically, you're pretty much out, out, out of those. Uh, their, their answer to it was more... They're including a USB-C to C cable in the box, and you could just connect them directly. You don't need the OTG adapter anymore. So that was a solution that I liked. It was a good solution. You transitioned us from one tech to the other in a nice, gradual way, and now their chargers are USB-C. The not including the charger in the box is a little bit of a concern when it comes to... Now, I realize Apple did it, and it was it felt weird when I unboxed the iPhone 12, uh, the 12 mini without the charger in it. The box is definitely thinner. They did save some money on their box for the iPhone 12. But if I wanted the charger, or if I wanted the faster charger, I'm getting a charger in a box that's extra. So the phone's more expensive and the charger's more expensive. So where is the where is the benefit? And a coupon, I think you're right. A coupon in the box, uh, or at least a discount code when you're purchasing it, maybe when you're buying it, if you're buying it on their website, may make more sense. So uh, typically Samsung does, with pre-orders on most of their devices, include at least a $50 to $100 credit towards accessories that that could sweeten the offer. Although... Those generally don't come whenever you're going with phone companies, right? Like you go with AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, 3 or O2, anywhere in, you know, in Europe. Um, 
your Vodafone, definitely. Uh, you're, you're not sure if those are going to be offers or maybe they'll include them as packages. We'll have to see. Uh, let me see here, Greg. I think that was an answer to Greg. Um, Joey B is asking, does anybody know if Huawei stops supporting the P30 Pro carrier variants? Uh, my, teleset, uh, my telecell variant stuck on August security patch update. I think if anything, um, as far as if I'm not mistaken, I want to say my P30 Pro is also uh, on that. That one actually hasn't really received a lot of updates. As time's going on, I don't think they're pushing out monthly security patch updates, so it may be more every three months or so. Uh, so I'm not sure. I haven't heard anything from... They don't generally announce stopping support. It usually just ends up being you factor it from when it was released. Now, the P30 was released last year, so it's not out of the two-year support. So just I would keep that in mind, uh, but it shouldn't be that far off. Uh, check a website if you if you're curious to see if there's any updates to the the phone the line of devices like the p30 and you want to see if other ones do uh, check a website called funkyhuawei.com they usually carry uh, oem uh, the updates that huawei pushes out to their devices and you can see if other variants of the p30 pro non not telecell uh, version uh, are still receiving updates or not i can tell you mine did not and mine is an unlocked one for but mine is the european model uh, Joey B, I think, uh, da, da, da. oh yeah, I think, yes. Yeah. So somebody's actually there saying, so you could try using high suite, uh, if you install it on your PC and then connect it and see if there's any updates coming in there. Uh, oops, sorry, Joey B, thanks. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I just got a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, sorry, $150 with Google pixel from Google. Um, I, I'm assuming you turned it in one of them as a, as a credit towards, a, uh, I guess, towards another phone. Uh, we'll have to see. Okay, so I think we're... Uh, my, okay, uh, my tech for your needs. Uh, <laughs> that's what I was about to change over, switch over right now. So I'm going to move this guy and put it on the side. Let's go ahead and do a quick hands-on with the vlogger kit. So let's go ahead and put this over. We're going to switch over to the overhead camera. And here we are. Okay. Hmm. Uh, a little bit of coffee. So we're going to start off by putting this one on the side. And I'm going to move my... Oh, actually, you know, before we go too far. So here's the kit. The kit actually is very nice. It comes... Everything is in, everything minus the phone is included in the kit. So you have the stand, the, the mount, and you can see kind of like what we're going here with the setup on the back. Uh, it is essentially made for all smartphones because it actually works with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So it does not include an adapter that works with your device. So you need to basically find a way to connect to the 3.5 mm uh, millimeter headphone jack to your smartphone. So if you have a headphone jack and it accepts external audio, works great. If you don't have a headphone jack, you do need to end up using an adapter. So for me, on my Samsung devices, I do need to use the original adapter that Samsung sells. This one's about, I think at the time that I bought it, it was about 15 bucks or so. Once you use this, then this system will work. So that's the biggest thing. But you essentially get your, to get the mount, uh, the actual phone hold holder, and then you get a nice little T-shaped connector at the top that you're able to connect two things. And they do include the light as well as the microphone. And as you could probably see, a dead cat that's present there. And you can see here, basically, the uh, the package includes the uh, one type, uh, one connector, basically the uh, micro USB. I think on USB C to USB Type A, that's going to be the charger for the uh, the light. So that's the micro LED on camera light. There's the clip uh, adapter, and of course, three gels or filters, as they, they like to call them. There's the grip, the holder, the cable, the dead cat, the stabilizing grip for the microphone, and this is going to be the road uh, video uh, the video micro compact microphone, and of course the DC one. So that's everything that's included in the box. And it literally is so simple to connect or to set up. So let's do this one on the side. And I'm going to move my keyboard here so that we don't have a lot of uh, distortion here. So uh, the overall setup that I have right now here, this is my V60. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it. And let's go ahead and look at the pieces of this thing, one piece at a time. So the V60 is what I decided to go with. It has a great audio input option. It obviously still has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And I like the fact that it's present on the bottom. Uh, so Let's go ahead and start off with the actual handle. The handle itself is very nice. It's detachable, so you're able to connect it directly to the actual base of the actual handle or use the uh, the nice little uh, adjustment option. It has road all across it and nice rubber fo uh, footings at the bottom. 
And I think Juan Carlos also commented on this. It has the nice little honeycomb design on the inside for two reasons. A, durability, but not only that, also it gives us the ability of having this at a very light configuration. So it doesn't actually have to uh, be too heavy and provide us the experience. So let's go ahead and do this one here. So there's two options. There is the one setting that goes all the way down. So that kind of puts it up at this level. And if you close it again and then twist, there's that ring at the top and now open it up again. It actually opens up at more of a configuration that's a little bit higher. So two height adjustable options and both are configured with the little twist knob that's present at the top. So you have that set up. And then of course, the next thing that we have, let's go ahead and go here. And then you would, it does actually come pre-configured or pre-attached to it. So here's the entire uh, controller. So you have a grid handle on the bottom and you of course have the adjustment top at the top. So that makes it very simple, very easy to use. And of course, you can actually use this with your smartphone, uh, not smartphone, your camera. So if you have, let's say a DSLR or anything like that, you could use it as a setup. So it's a very versatile kit. As I said, two options, one at this level, you do need to close it twist it over to the other side and then now you have a much more closer to the ground and much uh, definitely much better weight balance this way but otherwise you're pretty much set and you're now ready to be able to use it with this system so what i'm going to do i'm going to remove the mic i'm going to put the mic on the side right here and i'm also going to remove the light because the light needs a little bit of introduction as well Uh, the kit and we're back uh, we have a nice little adjustment option here with the little screw so you can actually adjust it it doesn't go beyond but it does shrink down so you're able to basically put it in and then adjust it down the cold shoe or the nice little t connector that's on top here enables us to use two things at the same time so you put this on you set it up if you just want to use it with the mic that comes with it you use one of them and at this point now and now i have two cold shoes and they are open on both sides so i can slide it in from the front or from the back and it works and of course we have a, a connector here on the side as well as one on the left if you want to be able to use it sideways so it's present on both ends as well as the top connecting it very simple you just put it in twist it over and now you're pretty much ready to go adjust the actual tension here at the bottom and of course now we can actually configure it to set exactly to the way we want it you want to be able to landscape portrait mode all of those things are great um, it does wiggle now because i don't have a phone in it but at the moment i put my phone let's say here the v60 uh, and we'll go ahead and just slide it in. Just be mindful when you're putting it in. There is no opening above uh, above or on the bottom for buttons. So in this situation, I have my power button there. I have my dedicated button here, the assistant button that's sitting in the volume rocker. So I will end up having to keep my phone slightly off-centered. So I'll put it here. And once I tighten it, no more issues, no more wiggling, and no more problems. So you get that configured correctly, and then we can also jump in. And we can look at the actual light, uh, the light cube. So this is the one that comes in with it. Uh, they do actually include, if I can actually remove this, I'm not sure. We'll see how that goes. If I can't, uh, we're gonna, okay, here it is. So the light cube comes in by itself. Uh, there is a USB-C port here on the side. So you charge it on the side, close it. And then there's a different power level. So there's one, let's press and hold to turn on. So here's one, here's two. And here's three. And you can pretty much see that my hand disappears here. Uh, but from a lighting point of view, this works really good. And of course, five. So that's going to be the lightest, uh, the, the brightest option. They include this little clip on with the nice little gels that we're going to get a chance to go to use. So you clip them on here, you clip it on the bottom and here it puts in correctly. And then all you have to do is literally just clip it on. There's a clip on this side, clip on that side. And now when I press and hold, the light is diffused. You notice even with the brightness level, it gives us a little bit of a much better light level. So you can see here the shadows, I can go brighter, and this is the brightest setting. Press and hold, and I can turn it off. If you want to change the uh, the gel, very simple. You just grab it from this side, put it in, and they do include a little box with a few different pieces, of a few extra filters that you can get. And we'll, uh, there's another green one that's sitting there. So we have a red one, a light green, an orange, uh, more of a yellow, uh, like a darker yellow, a blue, and of course a red. And depending on whatever scene that you're using, you can definitely customize it and change that very much on the go. All you have to do is there's a clip here, up there, and you just ever so nicely just lift it there, and then now it's on. It's easy and simple to use, and of course, you just slide it over here. And depending on the position, so let's say I'm actually shooting a vlogging style, meaning I'm going to be, you know, recording myself. 
I'll face it to myself. And of course, I can see how the light level uh, works. And because we have the ability of, uh, of adjusting it here, we can actually push, position it to the level that we want. Now, the last thing, and of course, this is going to be the star of the show. This is the Rode micro, uh, microphone. It comes pre-assembled to this unit. This is the stabilizer. And this is intended to absorb any kind of audio or any kind of distortion when you're using it. So any kind of movement, this will be able to kill, uh, use it. Uh, there's two options here. There is the uh, dual prong connector here. This one is basically, see, it has the word Rode. It goes to the back of the microphone. And the one that has a three prong connector at the back with a 3.5 mm jack, that's generally the one that goes to our smartphones. And again, for me, all I'm using it here is with the V60. I plug it in, very easy. They include the dead cat here in case you do need to use it and it comes pre-assigned. And I'll say this, that it actually does help a lot, especially when there's wind. So for wind issues, if you're outdoors or you're recording, this is definitely going to be easy. And here we go, same thing, put it on. And let's go ahead and do real quick and plug it in. And once you have that done, that's pretty much it. Uh, all you need to do from the smartphone side on as far as the actual phone, uh, and I said last time, they do include that USB-C cable to charge it. You jump into the camera app, and then from the camera app, if you're using the Pro camera, so if you jump into the Pro manual camera in the V60, you just need to switch over from the built-in microphone to the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack microphone. So for here, now it's recording the external option, and it's pretty simple. You can go through and, of course, start recording different audios, everything that you need. And the level that you're seeing here with the 4K60 is showing us the levels on the microphone here. So as, as I can actually just start talking to you guys, you can hear, you can see the levels, it goes up. And as I'm putting it away, it goes away and it just sets it up very nicely. Everything is great. It's it's perfect if I'm recording myself. And also if I wanna be able to record it in more of a video style, I can go in here. And all I have to do is the option to be able to select the audio here. So let me disable this. If you wanna be able to use some of the options here, this is not available inside of the video app when you use the external mic. The default video app records, so his recording started with microphone here, and then you're able to use it, and of course, use your 4K. Uh, preferably, I like to record with the back camera, so it works really nice. Um, I am working on the review for this. I just got this kit uh, the day of our show, so this was Thursday. I got the box. Juan Carlos pushed out his video yesterday. Um, I hopefully will be able to put something out for you guys for tomorrow. Great little kit, great piece of tech, especially for anybody that's looking for um, basically a piece of tech that helps them provide better audio. So if you use your phone, if you're if you're producing content from your phone, if you broadcast from your phone, this is definitely going to be very very helpful, and it'll help us a lot provide you guys or to provide you better audio. Um, again, if you have a 3.5 mm jack option available. Uh, then use it and make sure that your video camera, the application that you have in here, the video recorder uses it. If it doesn't, you can download Open Camera. That's also an open, a free camera that you can download that does have the option of using a 3.5 mm jack uh, headphone. So it actually allows you to select the audio source, either the headphones or the built-in micro, uh, the built-in app, because not all. Uh, default camera apps support it. So definitely a nice little thing. I do want to say again, thank you very much to Rode for sharing that with us, which was definitely very nice. Um, love Aki. Yeah, Aki definitely really, really nice. And I think uh, Movo makes another vlogging kit. There's a lot of other companies as well. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we see here, um, have you managed to get your hands on the Oppo W51 True Wireless earphones? Um, let me see. I want to say yes. I, I want to say yes. I think these are the uh, the X fifty the the W the, the W yes. Uh, you know, actually, I'll I'll double check with you. I got a pair. Um, I wasn't expecting them, uh, and I did get them here. Let's see, yes, the W. Uh, I, I like those. These are actually very very nice. I've been using them for a while. Uh, I've been so. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw those before. Uh, so this is. Um, Serbifius is asking is if I if I got a chance to play with them. Yes, uh, they're very nice. Sound really good. I've been using them with my Oppo, uh, with my Find X2 Pro, and the Oppo Watch for quite some time. So they really really sound very nice. Uh, the battery life is very decent. The audio performance is really nice. Uh, pairing them and updating them was actually pretty simple. So uh, if you guys are thinking about those, definitely. Um, same here. Aki has some great stuff. Uh, so Davin's jumping in. I'm using I'm using them with. Oh, he's using it with his iPad, the uh, XPS 13, and his Tab S6. Uh, definitely very very nice. Uh, okay, I, I'm hopefully I'm not frozen anymore. Uh, oh yeah yeah yeah. I think that's when we started. Uh, but with that being said, I do want to say. Let me see here. Uh, yeah. So 
I know typically we go into to two hours. I was about at 40, 30 minutes or so late. Um, I will probably end up making this one a little bit of a short one. I, I don't want to take too much of your time. Uh, the the Rode microphone is definitely a very nice piece of kit. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, it's definitely very, very nice. Um, as far as the Snapdragon 888, it looks to be what we were expecting, obviously an improvement in performance, better AI processing, uh, better image processing, better overall uh, benchmarks as well with the hardware. And that's something that we're going to be excited to see. Uh, the overall, I think if we had to kind of just uh, summarize what we see here in 2020, uh, I think just overall better performance, better battery for optimization, uh, and of course, just using everything that we have um, in a better way. So let me just make sure to bring here and make sure I got everything covered. Uh, but at the end of the day, what I would probably say is hopefully that we get we get more functionalities in better optimizations done on the hardware. That's my biggest thing with moving into new processors is that typically kind of ushers in higher prices and higher, uh, higher basically uh, maybe a harder way for us to kind of get into it. Uh, let me just double check here. And let me double check here and there. Yeah. <laughs> Always. Let's... Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, like I said, the short answer is just hopefully we'll get better things. And as thing goes on, we'll have to see how it goes. Um, I do want to say, uh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Davin, definitely appreciate that. Uh, Davin has to remind, of course, uh, I forgot about that part. The the overall performance that we see here, the overall benefits that we see with the Rode mic is actually very noticeable. The V60 on its own has very good audio, but I find that it because uh, depending on the mode that you're using, it tends to capture more audio around where the Rode just kind of does that very nice focusing. And it's off camera, so you never have to worry about it. And it's great, especially if you're narrating your own video. So if you're shooting a video, but you're behind the camera, this works even better because the audio is crisp. It's focused on you. Um, the audio on the V60, when I compare the two with the microphone, uh, the back camera is performed better because it's a fit. there's a one of the mics that was actually facing you there, where when you're using the front facing camera, it doesn't do that well because there's that always going to be that little bit of a delay. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but with that being said, uh, if you guys don't mind, throw me, <laughs> uh, throw those uh, TKception comments right away, so we can uh, we can get that, uh, gonna get that going on. Um, the uh, overall feo, I want to say thank you again to Juan Carlos uh, for letting me borrow it. Uh, it has been a pleasure, and I'm gonna have a hard time. Like I said, the only thing I'll probably say I need to do right now is probably figure out if there's anything on Thingiverse for a clip, like a custom made clip for this, so that I can print this out and just use it. So I'm able to position it somewhere where it doesn't fall around all over the place because it doesn't have anywhere to hang. The the bands they include are are hard to use. Uh, so let's go ahead and do here share screen. Uh, oh, and I think before we do that, let's go ahead and cancel this. We're going to start off with uh, with Greg. I think he's started us off with that one. So let's go ahead and live stream, share, share, and bam, right there. Greg is in there. I want to say thank you very much to Greg uh, for everybody joining us today. Aditya, as always, I love that thumbnail. Benedict Cumberbatch, always for the win. Uh, Davin Davis, of course, TK Seption, TK and Juan after dark. <laughs> We got to work on that name. I love that one. Uh, of course, Joey B, uh, love your new headphones. Uh, appreciate it, man. Always, always. Uh, Ronaldo, Ronaldo is always great. TK, um, I'm working on something with Ronaldo on uh, for his show, for his uh, for his channel. So hopefully, we'll have that coming out very soon. Uh, Aditya, of course, as usual. TK Seption, hashtag our bay, and of course, IR 1980. Uh, I want to say thanks again to Sam, to everybody else joining us today. If uh, taking some of your time from, you know, obviously being with your family on the weekends, uh, we are coming down. We're counting down the last few days of 2020. So with that being said, there's, if I'm not mistaken, let me double check. I think I have maybe one more show. Yeah, actually, uh, there actually is one more show. Episode 52 will be the last show of 2020. That'll be running next Saturday, um, obviously the day after Christmas. Hope you guys uh, are, you know, you'll be hanging around and of course kicking it with us. Our show with Juan uh, this week is going to be running on the 23rd, not the 24th, the day before Christmas Eve. Uh, and of course, that'll be episode two of the best of our week or the best of the week uh, show. So thank you very much. Be safe. Sorry for being a little bit late this morning, uh, but I appreciate your patience and, of course, still joining us and hanging out with us uh, today. Um, 
I, I really appreciate you guys taking your time and hanging out with me and, and talking and asking and answering questions. There's a lot of things going on, and I really appreciate the camaraderie that we've built in over time. Uh, and of course, as usual, be safe. Say hi to somebody you haven't had a chance to talk to for some time. I'm pretty sure everybody would love to hear from you. And of course, as usual, I'll see you guys next week and of course in the next episodes on this channel. Take care.